Nathan, I have to say, I was pleasantly surprised to hear you'll be leading the choir this Sunday. Thanks, babe. I knew my time would come sooner or later. It's only been seven weeks since you joined. Isn't it usually a 12-week benching period for new members? Yeah, but I guess my voice is so good that Chucks couldn't resist. Don't let it get to your head. If you were that good you would be singing alone, not singing alongside Chucks. <laughs> Come on, it's still a huge move for me. I'm grateful for the opportunity. I'm happy for you. I should get going now. <clears throat> Bethel, why don't we head back to my place? We can celebrate my big moment together. Nathan, you know how I feel about that. We can't just... Come on, Bethel, we're grown-ups. What's the harm? The harm isn't going against what we believe in. We're Christians, Nathan. You are in the choir. Babe, no one needs to know. But we would know, Nathan. And so would God. Whatever. If that's how you feel, then go. I will. Goodbye, Nathan. What do you want? Well, I'm not letting a little disagreement stop me from being your personal chauffeur. Nathan, I know my way to church. Bethel, I know things got heated last night, but I'm sorry. I shouldn't have pushed you like that. That is exactly what you said last time, but it didn't change anything. Bethel, please. I've been thinking about what you said. I don't want to harbor any kind of sin while I minister on God's holy altar that includes holding on to grudges. If you don't forgive me, then I won't be leading the choir this morning. Apology noted. But that doesn't mean everything's back to normal. I understand. If I ever overstep again, call me out on it. I sure will. Son, you will be singing both your part and Chex's part all by yourself. What? Why am I ministering alone? Where is Chuck's? Son, there's been a change of plans. Chucks won't be here today. But why didn't he tell us earlier? There has been an emergency. He had to leave town suddenly. This doesn't make sense. I only rehearsed my part. How am I supposed to do both? Then skip Chuck's part. But his part is crucial to the song. We can't just skip it. Nathan, we don't have much choice. What is going on, Mrs. Roberto? Chucks has been suspended. He... He got someone pregnant. I can't believe it. I know. We all thought highly of him. It's disappointing. But we have a service to run. Can you sing the song alone? Yes, I will. So, how did it feel to be the star of the show today, singing solo without Chucks? Something happened, Bethel. What happened? Is Chucks okay? Chucks didn't minister because he got someone pregnant. Oh my goodness, Nathan, I'm so sorry. That's awful. I feel like I'm no better than him. Maybe I should just quit the choir before God's wrath falls on me. Nathan, listen to me. You're not the same as Chucks. You had a temptation, but you didn't give in. God sees your heart. I know but it's hard not to feel tainted by association. Hey, let's do something fun to take your mind off things. How about we go to that virtual reality studio you mentioned last month? I thought you hated virtual reality. No. I hate the one at Cave because of all the horror scenes. But if it'll make you feel better, I'm willing to give it a shot. Thanks, Bethel. But actually, I have to prepare for my mom's visit. Your mom's visiting? You didn't mention that before. I wasn't aware until late last night. She went to a funeral and decided to stop by on her way home. Well, I'll stay away until she leaves. No, Bethel. I want you to meet her. Wow, that's a big step, Nathan. Are you sure you're ready for that? I am. I want to progress our relationship. I love you, Nathan. I love you too, Bethel.
mother. How was your trip, Mom? We will have plenty of time to talk about that. Who is she? Good afternoon, ma'am. Mom. This is Bethel, the love of my life. Well, it's lovely to finally meet you, Bethel. Nathan talks about you all the time. He does? Yes, he does. He's always telling me how wonderful you are. Oh, well, it's really nice to meet you too, Mrs. Boniface. Please, call me Mom. It's like I already know you. Thank you, Mom. That means a lot to me. Shall we head home, Mom? Yes, let's go. I can't wait to spend some time with both of you. Nathan, come sit down. We need to talk. Sure, Mom. How was your trip? I hope it was not too stressful. Nathan, we need to talk about something important. Please have your seat. What is it, Mom? I want grandkids. And I want them now. Mom, you know I'm not married, right? And even when I am, it's not like kids appear out of thin air. I'm serious, Nathan. I want grandchildren, and I want them soon. Well, I introduced you to Bethel because I am serious about her. I plan to propose in a few months, and then we can talk about starting a family. So what's stopping you from getting her pregnant now if you're planning to marry her anyway? Mom, I'm not comfortable having this conversation with you. I've already told you my plans, and that's all there is to it. Nathan, I just came from the funeral of a colleague who was roughly your age. He didn't have any children to carry on his legacy. I don't want that for you. So you think I'm going to die soon? No, Nathan, my prayer every day is for you to live a long and fulfilled life. But I don't want you to waste time either. Mom, I'm going to marry Bethel. Until then, there's nothing I can do to help you. So, how was your time with your mom? Must have been nice catching up, right? I wish it was like old times, you know? When there were no expectations, just love. What do you mean? It's always about when I'll do this or that. There's always something to rush to. Now she's pressuring me for grandkids. <laughs> Why don't you just give her what she wants? Oh, so you're on her side now? Whose side were you expecting me to be on? Yours? <laughs> Thanks for betraying me. I'm glad I could make you smile. Hey, would you mind coming over tonight? Just to keep my mom from roasting me again? I don't know, Nathan. I don't think it's a good idea. Please, Bethel. I believe your presence will make a huge difference. Plus, you are Team Grandma, remember? Alright, I'll come. Thank you, Bethel. You're the best. You won't believe how terrible Nathan used to be at cooking. He'd burn water if he tried. Nathan, is that true? Mom, that's ancient history. I'm a much better cook now. Oh, please. Don't try to sell me that lie. It's not a lie. I've been cooking for myself for a while now. What? Bethel, why would you let him cook by himself? I thought you two are serious about your relationship. Well, huh? <clears throat> um, Mom, did you hear about Aunt Janet's new job? No, I haven't. What's the news? Thank you. Mrs. Boniface, the food smells really good. Of course it does. Did you expect a woman of my age and experience not to know how to cook? Oh, I didn't mean it that way. Nathan, go and get my glasses from my room. Sure, Mom. If you had kids, they would be the ones running errands for me right now, not you. I'll be right back, Mom. So, how old are you, Bethel? Um, I'm 34 years old. 34? Did you know a woman becomes a geriatric at 35? What are you implying, Mrs. Boniface? I'm saying you're too old for my son. 
I'm afraid you won't be able to give him the grandkids I want if I let him settle down with you. Mom, apologize to Bethel right now. No. I won't apologize for telling the truth. Hi. I think I should go. Excuse me. Bethel, I'm so sorry for putting you in that situation. I had no idea my mom would act like that. I thought she liked you. It's okay, Nathan. You couldn't have known. I just... I need some time to process everything. Let me drive you home at least. I feel terrible about this. No, it's fine. I'll take a cab. You should go back inside to your mom. I don't want to go back in there right now. I'm still angry at her. Nathan, promise me you won't pick a fight with her, no matter what she says. I promise. I won't pick a fight with her. Okay. See you later. Dr. Grace. I've been thinking a lot about starting a family, but I'm worried about my age. How old are you, if you don't mind me asking? I'm 34. Well, let me assure you, I've seen women become mothers well into their late 30s and even 40s. But I heard women are considered geriatrics after 35. Is that true? Be honest with me. Yes, it is true. But that doesn't mean it's impossible for you to have a child after that age. What does being considered a geriatric mean for my chances of having a child? It simply means that you may face some additional challenges, it's not a guarantee that you won't be able to conceive. That doesn't make me feel any better. I can't believe my chance to become a mother is slowly slipping away. Miss Bethel, please know that you still have time. The only factor that indicates the end of a woman's fertility is menopause. And it's only confirmed after 12 months of no menstruation, typically occurring in a woman's late 40s or 50s. I have to go now. You could consider freezing your eggs. I don't have that kind of money. Here's some cash for your trip, Mum. Nathan, I know you can't wait to get rid of me for having your best interest at heart, but at least pretend you'll miss me when I'm gone. Mom, come on. You picked your departure date yourself. Don't make it seem like I'm kicking you out. Then why did you bring me to the train station two hours early? Are you tired of my presence already? If you don't want to travel anymore, I'll gladly take you back home. <laughs> My only child hates me because I don't want him to put an end to his lineage. Mom, I've thought about what you said. I'll propose to Bethel sooner than I planned. But I don't just want you married. I want you to be a father. And I'm not confident that Bethel can make it happen. You're not God, Mom. You don't get to decide who can and cannot have kids. I'm not claiming to be God, Nathan. It only takes common sense to know that younger women are more fertile, and they're littered everywhere. I could find you a suitable match in no time if you want. There's no way I'd get married to a woman I know nothing about. Fine, you can marry Bethel. But only after you prove she's still fertile. Are you asking me to impregnate Bethel before marriage? Yes. We can proceed with a wedding once her pregnancy is confirmed. Mom, I'm a Christian. I won't bring disgrace to myself and the church by impregnating a woman out of wedlock. You don't have to tell anyone about it. Think about your future. Think about your lineage. Don't you want someone to continue your legacy after you are gone? Have a safe journey, Mom. I will call to check up on you as your journey proceeds. I can't believe you're actually considering this. Have you thought about what this would do to our church's reputation, especially after what Chucks did? I know, Bethel. I'm torn. But I strongly believe in parental blessings. I can't get married without my mother's approval. If only when I got married before that colleague of hers died. Nathan, even if you had pre post before now, it wouldn't have changed anything. Your mother's issue is with my age. I know. But her pressure has only gotten worse since the funeral. I think she's still grieving, and it's clouding her judgment. 
I know this may sound juvenile but, I've always dreamt of a surprise proposal. Now, not only is the dream gone, but I'm being forced into getting pregnant out of wedlock to prove I am wife material. I feel terrible taking that dream away from you, Bethel. But I can't ignore the possibility that my mom might be right. Are you calling me Baron, Nathan? No, of course not. But what if my mom's constant claims about your age become a self-fulfilling prophecy? There is power in spoken words. Then I'll pray against it. Bethel, maybe we should take a break from our relationship. It might be for the best, for everyone involved. Are you breaking up with me? I think it's what's best for now. But if we can come up with a solution that works for everyone, we can talk about getting back together. I'll see you in church. Heavenly Father, your word tells me in Hebrews 13 verse 4 that marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled, but whoremongers and adulterers you will judge. Lord, I stand firm in my commitment to honor you in my relationship and to wait for your perfect timing. Sarah and Hannah conceived and bore children in their old age by your miraculous power. In Genesis 18 verse 14, you asked Abraham, Is anything too hard for the Lord? Indeed, there is nothing impossible for you, Lord. I cancel every negative word spoken against my fertility, for your word says in Isaiah 54 verse 17, No weapon formed against you shall prosper. I bless my womb and decree that I will conceive and bear children when the time is right, according to your perfect will. Lord, I declare that when the appointed time comes, I will not only conceive, but I will also deliver like the Hebrew women, as it says in Exodus 1 verse 19. I place my trust in you, cause I know that you are faithful to fulfill all your promises. Ma'am, rough day? Yes, it has been. But it's nothing to worry about. Well, you know, they say a smile can brighten up even the darkest of days. I suppose that's true. Glad I could help. Look, I know it's none of my business, but if there's something on your mind, talking about it might help. I appreciate the offer, but let's just focus on the road, shall we? Of course. Safety first. But you know, they also say a problem shared is a problem halved. Maybe I can offer some advice, if you're willing to share. Driver watch out. Excuse me, I'm here to see Miss Bethel Zane. Is she okay? Let's see. She's in room 204. But you can't see her right now. What? Why not? Doctor, we have an emergency with a patient in room 204. Her vitals are dropping rapidly. We need to get her into surgery immediately. Prep the OR and alert the surgical team. I'll be right there. That's Bethel's room. Please, let me see her. I need to see her. I'm sorry, sir. She's in a critical condition right now. I'll keep you updated as soon as there is any news. <laughs> Nathan? Mrs. Roberto. <laughs> I heard the news and came as soon as I could. <laughs> Nathan, instead of crying, why don't we pray for Bethel's recovery? Mrs. Roberto, I'm scared. I don't want to lose her. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we lift up our beloved sister Bethel unto your able hands. Lord, we know that you are the giver of life, and it is your will that we live long and prosperous lives. In Psalms 91, 16, you promise, with long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Father, we ask that you extend your hand of healing upon Bethel and grant her a long and fulfilling life. We declare your promises over her, believing that your word is true and faithful. We rebuke the spirit of untimely death that seeks to steal, kill, and destroy, for your word declares in John 10.10, 10, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life, and have it to the full. Lord, we lift up the medical team caring for Bethel, we ask for wisdom, skill, and guidance in their efforts to restore her to health. Strengthen them and give them clarity of mind as they work to save her life. Bethel. Grandma. Is that you? Yes, my dear. It's me. Welcome home. 
It's so peaceful here. I love it. It truly is beautiful, isn't it? But it's not time for you to stay yet. Why not? I want to stay here with you, forever. The harvest is plentiful, the but the laborers are few. The the... Who said that? It's a message, my dear. There is still work for you to do on Earth. Mr. Nathan, you've been here for two days straight now. You should really consider going home to rest. Bethel is stable, and we'll contact you as soon as she wakes up. I appreciate your concern, but I want to be here when she wakes up. I have a gift for her. That's very thoughtful of you. Well, in that case, make sure to inform the nurses on duty when she wakes up, okay? Of course, I will. Thank you. Nathan? Bethel? Bethel, you're awake. <sighs> Is today Sunday? No. It's Tuesday. Why then are you wearing your choir uniform? Bethel, you have been unconscious for two days. I've been waiting for this moment. Bethel, I thought I lost you. I died, Nathan. I went to heaven. What do you mean? I can't do it, Nathan. I can't give in to please your mom. There are more important things in life than a ring on my finger. On the last day, God won't ask about how many babies we have, or how old we were when we got married, or even who we married. Heaven is real, Nathan. I clearly heard a voice tell me the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Bethel, look at me. You're right. I have been doing some reflection since the last time we talked. I said I can't get married without my mom's blessing, because the Bible says to respect one's parents in Exodus 20 verse 12. But the Bible also says in Ephesians 6 verse 1, Obey your parents and the Lord. That means if our parents' commands go against God's commands, we are to obey God's commands. Bethel, you are a godly woman, and there is no one I'd rather spend the rest of my life with. Miss Bethel Zane, will you marry me? Yes, Nathan. Yes, I'll marry you. Yes! Thank you so much. You have just made my day. <laughs> I need to go tell the nurse you're awake. I'll be right back. Please do that, my head hurts.